So today we are going to be cutting in this huge panel. There's about 80 circuits in here, which may make it one of the larger panels I've ever cut in. So I'm going to take you guys along today and show you some techniques I use and basically just how I do my panels and hopefully you gain something from it. And wish me luck because <laughs> we're going to be here a while. Music is playing and we're ready to get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is reroute all of these wires behind the drain pipe up there. So one column is going to be the left side of the panel and the other column is going to be the right side of the panel and this way I know it will be a balanced panel, same amount of breakers on each side. A lot of people think that this is a longer way to do it but this will actually make it way easier and faster. Once you get those wires in there you know where they go, you know what side they're going to and you don't have to think. So now that I've tallied up um, the amount of wires that are going to be on each other panel, I'm going to go ahead and separate them evenly. So this is something I do on like every single one of my panels. I take a ground wire under a screw and that way I can tie off my wires. Okay, next step is time to strip the wires. I always strip them before putting them into the panel because it's easier. Both ways. In all the trades know there's no power today, so hopefully there's no angry people coming at me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to strip the wires and when we pull our wires we actually write what they are so this one says powder room entry lights so I'm going to strip it and then relabel it with the tape so that when I'm inside the panel I know what is what the only wires that I'm taping are the ones that are going under the breaker so this wire for example is a 14-2 red has a red and a black. So this is a 240 volt circuit. I will be taping both of these wires together with the label stating what it is. Here I am just using my Klein Tools dual function strippers to make a clean cut so that when the wires come in the panel, it's all gonna be straight across, nice and clean. So this wire here is labeled basement receptacles. So again, what I do is I just write the same thing here, basement, receptacles. However, this is an arc fault breaker, so I'm going to be taping the black and the white. I need to go get a new knife blade. This is like the dullest knife I've ever worked with. Try it. So I'm just going to summarize what I said in case it wasn't clear enough. Every single wire that is going under a breaker will have tape around it. If there is more than one conductor that is sharing a breaker, tape those wires together. Alright, so this is my last wire on this side. So I think I'm going to put it on the panel and then I'll get to this side after. I'm using two screw connectors just because I find them a bit easier for larger panels. If it was a smaller panel, I would use 4040s. Now that all these wires are in here, imagine trying to strip those wires in the back. So that's exactly why I strip it before going into the panel. I've never done a panel where there wasn't blood involved, literally. Um, so if a murder happens here one day, I might be called up because my DNA is all over this panel. <laughs> So 
now it's time to separate all of your bonds from the rest of the wires. So as you can see, this is how I'm organizing them. These wires are going to go directly back towards the back corner. So I'm unweaving them from the other wires in a way that will allow them to do just that. This panel is not currently live. The main breaker is off. However, one of my bond wires slipped underneath the cover where the feeders are and this happened. I'm alive. So what I'm gonna do now is put all of the bonds under the bond plate or bond bar. The way that I shape my bonds is I take my hand, I run it down, forming this U shape. You guys have seen this before in my videos. So basically I'm just gonna do this. Now when I touch it towards the back of the panel, it's gonna stay there and then I will 90 it in to under one of the screws. Now, if you're one of those guys that doesn't use an impact in the panel, I would highly recommend putting your bitch mitts on for this part. A lot of people might ask why I'm like confident working in this panel, especially after that big, you know, you saw it. Um, and what I like to say is, if you understand electricity, you're confident working around it. Like I understand how it works, so I know exactly what would happen in certain situations. So I'm prepared. It is also important to check and make sure that nothing has been damaged inside the panel. So I did take that cover off and luckily it didn't hit any of the lugs. So we are all good to go. All right, next up, neutrals. Now, we went at the beginning and we taped all of our neutrals that are under the arc fault breakers. So we're gonna pull out everything that's not taped and that goes under the neutral bar. Again, I'm using that U-shape technique to smooth out the wires and force them towards the back corner of the panel. Straight enough for the plumbers I know. Now I am just installing all of the breakers. I usually try and keep the same breakers together so all of my arc faults are at the top and then I go 15, 20, 30, 40, 50. So one of the most common questions I get is why do I put these little morettes on the end of my hot wires? And that's because if you take a look, the house is not finished. So these switches are not on, nothing is on, nothing is installed. So, um, but this panel is live. If I hit this main breaker on, it's gonna light up these bus bars and if you turn all of these breakers on, it's the whole house is going to be live. So that's not very safe. Um, a lot of people say, why don't you just lock out tag out? I don't do that because I do use some of these as temp plugs. So that's the reason. So as you can probably tell, I don't dress the wires that are going under the breakers the same way that I do my neutrals and bonds. Instead of doing a sharp 90, I like to put the wire towards the back of the bundle and then I pull it up, creating a small loop on the side of the panel. The reason I do this is just to leave some slack for future if you need to move that breaker around or if something happens and you need to strip some more wire, it's there, it's accessible and um, it just makes it so much easier. So now I'm just finishing up the right side of the panel the same way that I did the left side. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if you have any questions. I will try and stay active in the comment section. And here it is all completed ready for that panel cover to cover it up so that no one will ever see it except for maybe an electrician.